when she heard the loud thump and saw a dark thing hit her picture window, Faith thought someone had thrown a rock at her house. She put down her pen and the crossword puzzle and took off her reading glasses. She rose from her chair, ready to give the damn kids a piece of her mind. Damn kids was what Frank always said in response to the unexpected incident, the annoying accident, the blameworthy episode, even when whatever had happened was clearly her fault. It was an expression that stayed with her, comforting her through the years since Frank had been gone. She ran to the window and looked up and down the street, but there was no one there. No tracks in the snow, not in her front yard, nor the neighbors. Then she looked down, and there it was, on the hard, frozen dirt of the neglected window box, a smallish, blackish, brownish bird, a wild bird, a wintering bird. Faith did not know its genus or species. To her, it was just a poor little dead thing lying there perfectly still. She felt tears welling up. It was her fault. The window was too big. She'd wiped it too clean. The light inside was too inviting. The house was in its way. The house she picked out and urged Frank to buy. The house they bought for a song 28 years ago. The house built decades before that, directly in the path of this faded bird. Her fault. The same way it was her fault that dull Saturday afternoon seven years ago when she picked a fight with Frank about nothing. He said one thing and she made something else of it. She took offense, dug up some old hurts. With arms crossed, she vowed to sulk at home the rest of the weekend. And just to punish him, she refused to let him make up with her, refused to let him tease a smile back on her face, turned away when offered his love toll of one kiss on each cheek. It was her fault she'd let him give up on her, let him surrender to the dark mood and become angry himself, let him peel out of the driveway at the precise moment he did. Her fault she let him go on to the orchid show without her. For Christ's sake, it was the middle of winter. What a fanatic he was about his plants. How easy it might have been to tell the truth, to simply say she didn't feel like going all the way to Peoria on such a snowy day, to confess she was jealous of the plant sometimes, no matter how silly it sounded. But in the manufactured anger of the moment, she even refused to wave goodbye to him through the picture window as he backed out the driveway. A witness said there was black ice on the bridge. There was fog coming up off the river. It was starting to snow. A semi-trailer jackknifed. The driver swerved to avoid the accident, but it was too late. When the truck hit him, Frank and his Oldsmobile flew. First out through the rail, and then down, down, deep into the Illinois River, a black speck vanishing into the white. Those may have been the facts, facts that would absolve her. She was nowhere near the accident. How could she possibly be the cause of it? But facts are rarely the whole story. The true calculus must include an answer to the hard question. If she dropped the silly charade in time, had convinced him not to go out into the cold at all, but instead to curl up just the two of them, snuggling with a couple of hot toddies by the fire, could she have saved him? A tear rolled down and into the corner of her mouth. Faith grabbed a coat from the closet pulled it tightly against the bracing February wind and hurried outside. 
Oh, bird, she whispered, live. She took its body in her hands and blew warm air on it and made a solemn prayer for the tiny creature. Frank spoke in bullet points inside her head. Ticks, fleas, mange, disease. But she ignored his voice this time and pressed on with her one-word litany. Live! She focused all her attention on its closed eye, an organ no less round and not much larger than the head of a pin. She squeezed her own eyes shut and after choking on a tiny sob, caught her breath and then exhaled more warm air on the delicate feathers of its still breath, breast. Live, she murmured again. Suddenly, the eye opened. The bird panicked, flew in her face, scratched her deeply in the cheek, and flailed away from her, a black dot vanishing into the white afternoon. When she put her fa hand to her face, there was blood. She smiled. Thank you, she called after the bird, and waved goodbye. <laughs>